of a big overall problem called the form cut problem. So uh, a little bit about form cut problem. Um, it was first seen, references to it was first seen 18th century Japan, so it's a very old problem, but only recently, 1998, so kind of recently, um, Eric Domain, who's a professor at MIT, proved the fold and cut theorem, which solves this, and he uses two different methods, the straight skeleton method and the disc packing method. So we'll obviously be looking at the straight skeleton method. So straight skeleton method, there's really three parts to this. So first, we find the straight skeleton. Um, so that would be something like this. So um, I'm kind of getting to more how we develop these. Um, so then, this is going to be some of the lines we fold along. Um, so the fold and cut problem kind of comes about this idea of you can take any shape, and for any shape you can create a series of folds, and then you can make one straight line cut. So I have a little example here. So hopefully this works. So you can make one straight line cut, and I think this should be a butterfly. So. This is a series of folds, and we're developing the fold patterns that create these shapes when you make one single cut. So pretty cool. And also, interesting fact, Houdini also used this method as one of his magic tricks, so interesting fact. So um, when we, after we create this straight skeleton, we need to add a couple more lines, and I'll get into a little bit later how we add these lines. Um, but this is, allows us to make it flat foldable, so we can make one straight line cut through. Um, and then the last step is to determine, so this gives you all of the lines you're going to fold along, and then the last step is to determine how we're going to fold those lines. So whether we're going to fold them down in a mountain fold, or we're going to fold them up in a valley fold. So, um, so what is a straight skeleton? So straight skeleton pretty much tracks the path of vertices as we shrink a shape. So it's important to mention that when we shrink a shape, we're not creating smaller sizes of the shape that are similar to the overall shape. We're actually offsetting each edge of the shape in a certain distance perpendicularly. So this allows the shape to kind of change and move and that creates all of these different like points and allows, the, it creates the graph. Um, so these are kind of some examples. Um, so one major thing we have to observe in order to implement this with a computer is angle bisectors. So Every straight skeleton is just a series of angle bisectors. So if we look at this one, this is one of the ones I had on this slide before. So this is created with the shrinking method. But what we can notice is that each one of these lines is a bisector of a pair of eight edges. So like this line right here will bisect these edges. And then this line right here is a little bit weird because it ends up bisecting these two edges. So same thing over here, I've kind of labeled what all things bisect, so BC bisects BC, and this is the bisector of C and E, so this is like as the shape shrinks, we lose edges and stuff like that. So, so this allows us to do a new method for computing straight skeletons, because the shrinking and expanding, while it's really easy to understand on paper, it's really hard to do with a computer, so we need a more efficient way to do this. And uh, David and Jeff Erickson developed this kind of theorem for doing this. So it works on predicting kind of the events that might happen in the straight skeleton. And events are really the things that cause, like if we go back, they are the things that cause these nodes in the straight skeleton. So when the path changes, those are the events. Um, and then we represent those events as 3D triangles and then we can basically choose which ones actually happen. And then we can repeatedly recalculate what might actually happen and decide what will happen. Um, so two important things to mention, there's two different types of events. So our first type of event is the most common and any shape you have will have these events. Um, so this is called an edge event. So basically it goes on the fact that since our shape is changing, an edge event occurs when a side disappears. So if you look at this when it's shrinking, kind of zoomed it in there, this side right here disappears. So that's an edge event, it's perfectly called an edge because the edge is disappearing. So then the next event is called a split event, and these occur less often, and they only occur in shapes that have uh, reflex vertices. So a vertice that's greater 
than 180 degrees. So this only occurs because the shape has a reflex vertice. And this is really where the shape splits into two separate parts. So if you see here, while we're shrinking the shape, this vertice here collides with this line, and the shape is broken into two triangles. So split events. We're really working with edge events right now because things get a lot more complicated when you add any kind of reflex angles. So we're really working with only convex shapes. Um, so as far as predicting edge events, so if we have this convex polygon, so no reflex angles right now, so we can basically, this is kind of our prediction of the first series of events we can see. So these are all the angle bisectors, and what we're predicting here, we're, we're looking at where all these angle bisectors intersect. So these different triangles are where the possible intersections could occur. So the problem is, is all these could be possible nodes that could be created, but which one happens first? So this is kind of where we add in the third dimension. So as we're shrinking any of the shapes, we can kind of calculate the speed. So the vertices of the shape kind of move at different speeds. Um, so if we look at this shape, when we're shrinking in one time, this vertice moves a lot shorter of a distance than this vertice. So we compare those. This vertice is moving a lot faster than this vertice. So we can basically calculate those speeds and almost have like a velocity of each vertice. And that allows us to basically determine which, like how long it takes for these events to happen. So then we can basically add a time component to our structure and see exactly where these things happen. So like this event will happen later and this one will happen earlier because they're lower on the Z axis. Um, so when we're storing these triangles, we, so if we look at these triangles, we basically are storing these in a list of triangles. Um, so each triangle is made up of a vector, which it would be one of the angle bisectors. So that's, so two vectors. So we have, like if we look at, I think I have B right here. So that would be this vector and this vector. And then a 3D intersection point. So we're actually storing these as 2D vectors and then a 3D intersection point, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's, it works with our project. Um, so each vector is kind of a composition of an initial point, so that would be like these two points here would be the initial points, and then a change factor. And this is kind of where our speed comes back in. And that's what, like how, What's the distance that the vector moves in each direction in the x and y axis over one time step? So the like magnitude of this kind of vector right here would be the speed. Um, so and then we have our 3D intersection point, which will be just three coordinates. So then we go into handling edge events. So if we have the shape right here, we can calculate all these triangles and then we find the lowest intersection point. So this is going to be our lowest time point. Um, so then what do we do? So what we do is, first of all, we need this event triangle where the event is occurring. We're going to delete that triangle, and then we're going to delete any triangles adjacent to it. So we're going to delete this blue triangle, this pink triangle, and this other blue triangle. Um, so that's what I've done here. So this is kind of the updated shape. So once we delete all those triangles, we need to add two triangles back in. Because basically what's happening is the path of these two sides of the triangles are changing. So actually, if you look at, so these are the new, two new triangles. Um, so these sides will be the same as the old adjacent triangles, but we have a new bisector that they're running along, which will bisect these two angles now. So we have a new bisector, so we need new triangles. Um, so that pretty much gets us here. So this is the event triangle that's already occurred, and then this would be like our shrunken shape, kind of. So that's the time at work we're at. So that's the shape we're at. And then we can repeatedly do this, and then we get the final trait skeleton. Um, so our algorithm is kind of what I just ran through. So we create all the list, the list of event triangles. Um, and then we basically run this function until we have at least triangles, because one thing we haven't really figured out is where do we stop? So we're running it until we have at least 
just three triangles left because then we can just project those down and we'll have our straight skeleton. Um, so then we handle the events, um, we add triangles and we delete triangles, and then right now we're just projecting those last three triangles down. Um, so then computing angle bisectors. So we actually found a really simple method for computing these angle bisectors, and that's basically if we have these two vectors, we can convert them to angle, uh, to, sorry, unit vectors, so they have magnitude of one length, and then we can add these together to get our angle bisector. So that works really nicely where we have this angle bisector. So in order to get our final vector kind of, because right now we have the direction kind of, but we need how far it's gonna move. So we can look at a shrink of one unit, and then we can basically calculate that speed, which this is actually the function to calculate that speed. So that's gonna be the distance from here to the inner shrink, and then we can adjust that back vector accordingly. So that's gonna be our kind of final angle bisector. Um, so I'm gonna show you some of the code we've got done so far, so. Okay, so right now, have this working for a lot of shapes, so we can kind of just enter in. There's some shapes that don't work here, so like if we add any um, reflex vertices, it's not going to work. And if we add any kind of weird vertices, like normal, like polygons that have equal lengths, don't work right now. Um, but so this is kind of our starting triangle list. So those are our first triangles, and then. Now we have this function that creates the skeleton. So we can do that for a lot of different shapes. Okay, so the next thing we really have to look at is what do we do next? So we have we have this, this skeleton right now. So we have this shape. So this is actually a shape I did before. So this is actually generated from my program. So the problem is, is we can't fold this flat. So we need those extra lines I was talking about earlier. So what we can do is we can create these perpendiculars. So these are basically going to be the perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines kind of result from this idea. So the straight skeleton, which these are the black lines, and I've kind of just extended them to be our full page. Um, it breaks the shape down into different regions. So each region will have a single side in it. So in order to create these perpendicular lines, we can just basically, from each node, which will be the intersection of our straight skeleton, we can draw out from that node perpendicular to whatever shape sides in that region. And we can create these perpendicular. So they're perpendicular to shape sides, so we call them perpendicular. So we have all those lines. Some of them aren't necessary, um, so some of them will create like zigzag folds when we actually fold it up. So we haven't really gotten into what we actually need yet, but those are all the, so once we have all these lines, these are basically all the lines that we can fold along. Um, so I actually created all these perpendiculars for this shape, and fingers crossed the shape will cut out.